what's going on y'all this is chef prime coming in again this topic we are going into the history of america through barbecues so this is going to be a um i already know i'm going to get hungry but let's let's just jump right in it and the united states Thanks, of sir. america land of the free home of the brave a country with a storied past that's made its way to the front of the world stage thanks to one thing and one thing only meat yes hello internet welcome to food theory on the road the show that's always saucy and today we're talking about the whole reason i wanted to do this mini series to begin with barbecue this is it Folks, this is what made living out of my suitcase and not showering for two weeks worth it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Pause the episode. Where did you? The fridge. Duh. Don't, don't say that like it's normal. Now, what did you just say? I said that this is what made it all worth it. No, the showering part. The suitcase part I get. That's fine. But, like, why couldn't you shower? Because. The road. It stopped ruining this for me. Ruining this for you? I have smoked. Melt your armpit, dude. I know that you need to shower. Did you at least, like, wash your legs? Nobody does that. Hey, wow, don't you have an elsewhere to be? Fine, but I'm disappointed in you because you didn't make a brisket to get the brisket joke to start the episode. <laughs> that brisket to get the brisket, baby. Like I was saying before I was rudely interrupted. She can't hear me. Barbecue is the whole reason I was so excited to do this road trip in the first place. It may not be the only or even the first place to do it, but nothing screams America like slathered barbecue sauce and ribs smoking. You may think I love it because it's delicious and you mm. wouldn't be wrong, but what really fascinates me is just how different the same concept is done in different regions in the country. States from California to the Carolinas have their own spin on it. And not only Ooh. is the history of the country completely intertwined with barbecue, but the United States wouldn't be quite as united without it. Now, barbecue's roots go back to the very beginning of American history. It started as a technique for cooking food that originated from indigenous tribes in the Caribbean, specifically the Taino tribe. They would cook their meat over an indirect flame using green wood to keep the food and the wood used to assemble the barbecue from burning. Now, they would mainly use it to cook fish since that's what they had in large supply. So how did they get to the states and in meat form? Well, the answer is mostly Christopher Columbus. When he encountered the Caribbean islands, he saw this technique and was impressed. And he, along with the Spanish explorers with him, named this technique barbacoa, meaning a raised oh, frame of sticks because of the structure they'd make to cook. But he wasn't the only one. Other European explorers also saw the fish being cooked over the open pits. And instead of heading to the south, they took it all the way up to New England. And so from the northeast, and the South, barbecue began to take hold in the young country. Now, it's important to note here that despite the Europeans encountering this method, it was the enslaved African chefs that were the actual early pitmasters that developed barbecue and eventually spread it throughout the country. And the reason it got from smoking fish to the huge variety we see today comes down to the same reason the Caribbean tribes used fish. Barbecue really is just cooking whatever you got in spades. And in the early years of the U.S., that was pork. Pigs were in large supply and what is now normal cooking whatever you want on a open flame barbecue or in christopher columbus case barbacoa barbacoa i don't got that tongue spin off but you get it um and then obviously as you see time goes by introduction of other animals yeah now we're talking. North and South Carolina, and better yet, pigs were much lower maintenance than other livestock. Cows, for instance, are sort of like the divas of the farm world. They need a bunch of space and a bunch of food. Pigs, on the other hand, didn't really need large pens. And if supplies were low, they could just be sent into the forest to find food. And while smoking a pig was fine and dandy, the slow and low method sometimes led to dry pork which is never fun to eat. So both North and South Carolina began adding a little sizzle to their barbecues, using sauces as a way to preserve the juices in the meat. And the different colonial immigrants thought of their own individual ideas to do so, leading to the iconic characteristics of Carolina barbecue. Something Ooh. I got my own history lesson in when I caught up with a pit master in South Carolina. The term Carolina barbecue is- Hey, pause, pause, shout out. I know chefs get a lot of the, the spotlight, a lot of the credits, 
a lot of the you know the the celebrity appeal but you know what shout out to all of the pit masters all over the world not just america but all over the world there's different levels of barbecuing uh in america we love barbecuing in our grills if you go over to you know like hawaii and those kind of caribbean islands they love digging uh pits and they love barbecuing uh in those pits and they take these huge banana leaves or you know whatever their indigenous leaves are and they put it over and and they get a nice smoke they get a nice uh sear nice cook like slow low like everything that you could think of when it comes to magnificent barbecue techniques is all done and then you go over to other places yeah you might still see the raised wood um in a, in a you know open fire underneath and you know so there's wherever you go there's going to be different levels of barbecues but shout out to all of the pit masters all around the world y'all y'all step up man y'all come together man because it's not just the world of chefs pit masters got a game too our sauce it's the mustard base vinegar base the two different bases came from the populations in the north and south north carolina largely populated by the british favored with a u a vinegar based sauce since they loved that tart flavor so using cider vinegar and peppers they were able to achieve this sauce on their barbecued pork that is still mm. used in north carolina barbecue today. I love it south all. carolina was different it was mostly populated by french and german immigrants but they both had one spice slash condiment in common mustard has been a part of german and french cuisine for a long Long time going as far back as the Middle Ages. So mustard was a pretty natural duh when it came to what they chose for their barbecue. And it's the reason why South Carolina barbecue sauce is sometimes known as Carolina. Carolina oh. Now, oh, I mentioned baby. that Europeans also took the barbacoa idea up to the Northeast, but it didn't quite spike in popularity like it did in North Carolina's neighboring state, Tennessee. Like the Carolinas, Tennessee also used pork in their barbecues because of how abundant it was. But once again, the style of barbecue changed due to what they had at easy access. Memphis, Tennessee is right on the Mississippi River. And during the 1800s, they had access to goods being shipped in the Mississippi River trade. They had things like cotton, tobacco, and molasses. Using the sweet taste of the molasses, the early pit masters added to the traditional sauces of the Carolinas and created a whole new sweet barbecue sauce to go on their pork. But Memphis did way more than just adapt the sauce. They introduced another way of flavoring their pig, the dry rub. A dry rub is when you rub seasoning and spices into a cut of meat which flavor and i'll tell you something too um when it comes to those dry rubs y'all listen up listen up when it comes to those dry rubs y'all need to cut back on that salt i don't know if y'all using pink himalayan uh salt if y'all using sea salt if y'all using your standardized uh, kosher salt whatever y'all use to to salt it up your, your uh, rubs cut back because i've been tasting I made my own uh, variety of rubs and I've tasted, you know, hundreds of rubs and your salt levels is crazy right now. Y'all got to that sodium thing is a is, is a thing. So all right, I digress. I digress. it when cooked it wasn't initially used for flavoring more like a byproduct of their effort to preserve their cuts of meat in those days preserving food was not as easy as we have it today with refrigerators and airtight packaging they had to get a little more creative the europeans brought over their technique of preserving food using seasonings like salt the salt would drain the meat and the bacteria in it of water content and prevent it from living and breeding which could spoil the food but as barbecue grew people discovered it gave a nice taste to the meat and sure Sure enough, they started throwing in whatever spices they had access to to see what flavors they could make. With their access to brown sugar, they started adding it to the dry rub, creating a sweet but crispy bark to the outer layer of the pork. Wow. So Memphis essentially created two styles of barbecue, a wet, sweet sauce or a dry, crispy, but still sweet cut of meat. So we've covered the places in the states that are known for their pork. But as we move toward the central states, a new meat is introduced to the flames of barbecue, beef. Cows weren't indigenous to the new country. They were imported by Spanish explorers back in the late 1600s and were brought into what is now Texas. It was favorable to raise cattle there given its wide open space and grasslands for these large divas to roam and breed. So naturally, beef became the most popular protein over time. But it wasn't until the 1800s that modern Texan barbecue developed when the German and Czech immigrants settled.
look, 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 check this out. I'm, I'm still, I love barbecue. I love barbecue. Look, I am at a crossroad. Some of y'all, most of y'all have favorites. You either die hard, Memphis, Texas, North or South Carolina, like you're, you're die hard, right? Me, I'm in a cross. I'm in a cross between uh, the Carolina. I love North and South Carolina, even though those is a little, a little bit different, but like I'm in a cross between the Carolinas style of barbecue and Texas. Texas, though, go hard on that barbecue, man. They, I know if you talk to somebody from Texas, a pit master from Texas, they're like, they're going to talk it up. I get it. They're like the undisputed kings and the barbecue um, uh, competitions and the sauces and all this and that and originators of whatever, right? They're going to talk it up. But, hey, can't you can't sleep with the Carolinas. They got some secrets in their pockets, too. So, yeah, I, that's I'm just I I just want to put that out there. Chef Prime is in a cross between the Carolinas and Texas, but I love it all, though. Like in the East, they brought over their fondness of smoking meats. What started out as a preservation method, similar to the salt, also left the cooked meat with a nice smoky flavor from the wood they used. But they didn't stop with just smoking the beef. They also added a simple dry rub to their cuts, typically brisket. Unlike our friends back in Memphis, Texans wanted to focus on enhancing the natural flavors of the beef, and so used a simple rub of salt and pepper that's also known as the Dalmatian rub. So when it comes to Texas style, it uh, I don't know who made that name, a Dalmatian rub, but in the kitchens, that's just simply called chef salt, <laughs> but whatever, let's keep this thing going, but it's called chef salt. <laughs> Dalmatian. It's all about the meat. A lesson I learned from another pitmaster in none other than Austin, Texas. Here in Texas, beef is king. Just let that be known. That's why you're going to see brisket, chopped beef. Barbecue's about using what you got. Oh, and in case you're wondering about the meat you see cooking over that delicious oak wood fire, classic Texas brisket. Scrumptious, delicious, and another word that ends in ishes. But there's one final major region of barbecue left, Kansas City. How did this place define itself as one oh. of the barbecue epicenters of the states? Yo, Kansas, the most slept on and overlooked region when it comes to barbecue. Hands down, don't sleep on Kansas. They got some powerhouse pit masters there that's really holding things down in the name of good old fashioned classic barbecue. Yo, I even, you know, for a hot second, I even forgot about Kansas myself. So I, I know across the board, you know, when you're looking at the barbecue trail, um, it might end in like Kansas, like, but like, you know, people forget people, you know, Kansas is a well slept on state, man. But they doing numbers, though. One of the big things it does differently is variety. Also known as the melting pot of barbecue, Kansas City uses all kinds of meats within their barbecues, and it all comes down to location and exploration. In 1871, once the railway system was in full swing, the Kansas City stockyards were established where livestock like cows, pigs, sheep, and chickens could be kept in masses. Because of Kansas City's location near the railroads and the Missouri and Kansas rivers, it was an ideal place to trade livestock, and this gave Kansas City a wide variety of meat to choose from for their barbecue. So they use beef, pork, chicken, turkey, <gasps> lamb, fish, you name it. This is one of the reasons it's known as a melting pot, incorporating many types of meat into the traditional barbecue style. But the way they cooked the barbecue was mostly the same as Memphis, using sweet, wet sauces, all thanks to a guy called Henry Perry. Henry, Henry Perry left Memphis in the early 1900s to Kansas City, setting up a barbecue joint. He brought with him the Memphis-style barbecue sauce, which is why it's still used in Kansas City today. So with the Carolinas, Memphis, Kansas City, and Texas. It's only used as the base, and then they did a lot of things to elevate it, but it's it's just a base sauce that they uh, crossed over. 
All right. So don't don't get it twisted. They didn't steal. They didn't do anything. They just took it, use that as a base, add some more uh, seasonings and, and other things to it. And it kind of elevated what was already going on in those other regions. We completed our exodia of American barbecue. And sure, there's plenty of other states that have their own spin, like California, but it's those four that developed alongside the country itself. And wouldn't you know it, there wouldn't be much of a country without barbecue. You see, once the forms of barbecue became cemented and popularized in all different areas of the country, the act of cooking and smoking meat wasn't just for regular old meals. It became an event. The low and slow method allowed people to gather for all sorts of things, like celebrations, holidays, and most importantly, political campaigns and debates. Andrew Jackson, a Tennessean, was the one who really sealed the deal in tying American politics to barbecue when he held the first one in the White House in 1829. And from there, barbecue was what joined the country together. And even when the country wasn't together, barbecue was there. Civil War, soldiers were sent off with barbecues. When the war ended, barbecues were held all over. When the emancipation of the slaves happened, the formerly enslaved people of the South celebrated with barbecue too, which was fitting since, like I mentioned earlier, the enslaved people were the ones who were the original pit masters. Look at that, y'all. Dad bods deserve you know, better go teams. Go I found and just like the country had helped define, barbecue kept evolving and reached its final form with the Industrial Revolution. Suddenly, sticks and pits in the ground were no longer needed, and people didn't have to spend hours and hours tending to meat thanks grill. to the mass production of metal grills and stoves. It became less technique intensive because almost anybody could fire up a grill and slap some meat on that bad boy. So that's what I was kind of saying to y'all uh, uh, earlier. You know, in America, we use, again, we use a lot of grill systems, but as you go into other countries, they still hold true to the the, the rawest first gen level of barbecuing. They dig in those ditches, you know, and they cook in either within the ditch that they dig for the barbecue or they're cooking on top, as you see in some of the illustrations here. Uh, where they had like the logs and everything to kind of like hoist the uh, the meats up uh, from the fire pit. So a lot of that first gen level barbecuing um, culinary technique is still being widely uh, implemented once you go overseas to to those pit masters. And look, there is a very distinctive and huge level of difference in flavor and texture uh, from American and, you know, obviously the gold medal goes to, you know, all these other countries overseas and, and the islands as well, cannot compare. And with that burst in mass production of metal, there was a huge uptick in meat grinders being used in factories across the country. Meat grinders that were used to make a particular popular style of beef that eventually became known as the hamburger. Not only that, but also ground the meat that was filling baseball parks in hot dogs. The final evolution of barbecue took it out of the hands of the incredibly skilled pit masters and gave it to the general public, which allowed for barbecue to unite the country once again, but in a different way, the backyard barbecue. In the 20th century, the gas grill made it way easier for people to throw some patties onto the fire and cook up dinner for their entire block. Suddenly, the social aspect of barbecue came back in full swing, all to sell these newfangled grills. Companies took advantage of the fact that families started becoming obsessed with the televisions in their living rooms and started marketing their products as must-haves for families and friends celebrating holidays. Well, really just the one holiday, the 4th of July. And like that, barbecue became synonymous once again with the U.S., its politics, its history, History and its pride. What started out in the young colonies as usually undercooked and tasteless pork ended up becoming what would define the country with sauce, ribs, burgers, mm. and grills. So mm. there you have it, friends. Now you know how the history of the U.S. is inextricably tied to meat. And no matter how you slice it, smoke it, or dry rub it, the country as it exists today wouldn't without barbecue. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Yo, so... I want to say, you know, showing love to other creators. Um, definitely go out to the Food Theory uh, page, subscribe to their channel, subscribe to my channel, of course. But 
obviously you know i want to show love and support to other channels as well so subscribe to the food theory channel they do have an incredible team that put together a lot of um incredible videos covering a lot of array of topics that you can really learn from so uh but when it comes to american food the true american cuisine is barbecue all right things like pizza uh that was created in italy we can't claim pizza even though we eat a lot of pizza we cannot claim hot dogs because that was also created in germany first even though we eat it a lot a lot of people think pizza hot dogs uh you know simple foods like that is american true cuisine no immigrants came from germany and italy with those things um wieners not hot dogs hot dogs is like disgusted byproducts very cheap uh and meats fats uh stuff like that kind of like it's disgusting um but like uh the the true wieners the uh pizzas and stuff all of that is from somebody else so what we have is barbecue all right uh we perfected the barbecue model so barbecue cuisine um i wouldn't even say cuisine but just barbecue is the american or like authentic american uh cuisine I have to keep going back to say cuisine, but whatever, y'all. Y'all get the drift. All right. Thank y'all. Uh, don't forget, you know, to subscribe to my channel too. I need some love. I need that support as well, y'all. All right. Um, I'm going to go right back into another one, y'all. Thank you for your time. Chef Prime out.